Hello and welcome. My name is Kevin Ashton. I'm a chef and food writer. And today I wanted to talk about egg dishes. Specifically, I wanted to talk about omelettes and frittatas and how you should use them in your kitchen. First up, we're going to talk uh, a little bit more about frittatas. Now, when you make something like a frittata, you should be thinking in the way they do in Italy, which is they'll make a frittata to use up all their little bits and pieces from their fridges. So if they have a little bit of potato that's cooked, uh, or maybe they've got a little bit of chopped panacetta, or maybe they've got some different kinds of cheese, uh, they'll use that up as well. So to make a good uh, frittata, you need to really use a cast iron pan and um, and it needs to be started on top of the stove and then put into the oven. Now some people believe that a frittata should be uh, flipped in the pan on the stove and then put in the oven with some additional cheese on the top. But I don't like uh, to do it that method. One, because it's complicated. Your frittata might break when you're trying to turn it over. And two, I don't like to make the eggs too rubbery. It should be light even though it's cooked in the oven. Uh, if you whisk your eggs well and you, you coalesce the eggs together before you put the frittata into your oven. So today I'm going to put some uh, courgette in my frittata because I have some courgette in my fridge. I'm going to put some padano or you could put some parmesan cheese or you could put some mozzarella or provolone. Uh, but you don't really want to use strong cheeses on frittata. So if you have gorgonzola, keep that for something else. Uh, otherwise it will sort of overpower the other flavors because you want to be thinking about the combination of flavors. So I might also put some... Uh, a few little strands of basil in there along with the panacetta, the courgette and the padano cheese. So let's get started. So one of the important things I think when you're creating a recipe for people to try is to really give them the sizes of the cake pans or the frying pans that you're using, particularly when you're trying to get people to replicate your recipe. So here we have a 10 inch, which is about 26 uh, centimeters in diameter. It's a cast iron pan, and this will probably take about 8 to 10 eggs. Move the pan out of the way, and we'll talk a little bit about our ingredients. So I've got 75 grams of cooked potatoes that I've just cut up from what I had in the fridge. I've got a few fresh basil leaves from my basil plant. These are two sun-dried tomatoes. Now I buy the sun-dried tomatoes from Lidl and this is really inexpensive. They're only 99 pence a jar and they're very versatile and this will add a lot of uh, depth and extra flavour to the omelette and we will go really well with the courgette and the cheese and the basil. I have one small courgette, which is about 100 grams of courgettes, and we're just going to cut the seeds out of it as I've done in these two quarters, and then we will dice it up. We've got oh, 200 grams of panacetta. I've cooked one half of it off already, and I determined that I need to use 200 grams. So this started off as 200 grams of raw panacetta. By the time it cooks down, because it's quite fatty, uh, we'll probably have about 125, 140 grams of panacetta. And we've got 100 grams of padano cheese. Again, you, if you wish, you could use parmesan cheese or other kinds of cheese. But again, for an omelette of this size, and that panacetta is going to probably feed at least six people, you need 100 grams of cheese. I had a hundred grams of courgettes, a little courgette sitting in my fridge and I cut it in half and then I've cut the halves in half again so I end up with quarters and then I just run the knife along following the seeds to take the seeds out because there's an awful lot of water in those seeds and they can also make it a little less sweet, a little more bitter. 
Often in uh, Turkish and Greek cuisine, they often take the seeds out of the courgettes. So now we just want to make a nice dice. So I'll move those seeds out of the way. I'm just going to cut these in two, which will be fine. And then we're just going to cut it pretty small. Now I'm going to cook these in the fat that comes out of the panacetta. And I like to cook my ingredients for my panacetta, for my frittata, separately. Because often you're going to have some moisture come out of these ingredients, which may make your non-stick pan, particularly a cast iron pan, stick. And that's why I'm going to cook the ingredients ahead of time. Okay, we'll just put that back into the bowl. And then first thing we're going to do is cook the rest of the panacetta. So I've cooked half of my panacetta already and I'm going to cook the other half. So I have my pan hot and I like to cook the ingredients that I'm going to put into my um, frittata in a separate pan. I don't want to use uh, the, the cast iron pan because you may get some water, particularly out of the courgettes, and it may stop the frittata and make it stick. And I don't want to do that. So if we use a non-stick pan to cook our ingredients ahead of time, then that will guarantee that the frittata will not stick in my cast iron pan. Just move that the panacetta around the pan. Make sure we don't lose any of it. So once the panacetta is nice and crispy and brown like the other half, I will then use the fat to cook the courgettes and give the courgettes a little bit more flavour. Now I won't put any salt into the uh, frittata because there's, there's salt in the panacetta. Um, there'll be a little bit of salt added to the, the courgettes um, and there's a little bit of salt, natural salt in the padano so it doesn't need more salt. And just keep moving that the panacetta around. If, of course if you can't get panacetta or if you don't happen to have any panacetta in in your fridge then you can use bacon lardons or you can use back bacon or you can use streaky bacon or you could use a slice of ham use what you have in your fridge because you like to keep moving and using up things i like to help people to think about what they've got in their fridge and how they can use those ingredients up the next day to use them while they're fresh so now the bacon, the, the panacetta is brown enough because it will carry on cooking when you take it out and you don't want it too brown. This has only taken about three minutes to get this brown if you, once you get your pan hot. So I'm going to top this container up. I think I need to use tongs. It might be easier to get hold of the... small pieces of the pancetta. And we're going to keep the, the non-stick frying pan on the heat and we're going to put the courgettes directly into the hot pan. Now this will cook really, really quickly. This will only take about three minutes to cook here if your pan is hot enough and you really what you're trying to do is get a little bit of color and to get some of that water out of those courgettes without losing too much flavor and I am going to add some black pepper and a little twist of salt now don't disturb it too much, but this will turn 
just want a little bit of colour on it and then what we want to do is we want to have a, a plate with some paper towel on it because we want to drain the fat back out of the courgettes. Right, it's just about starting to colour. That is fine. You see that? That is fine. So we're going to turn the heat off completely. Okay. So we want to just completely drain that oil, that fat, out of the courgettes before we use it for our frittata. Now for a frittata this size of a 10 inch skillet I'm going to use all the eggs I have which is 10. If I'd have had a dozen I might have used a dozen for a pan this size. But you go with what you got and it also depends on how many fillings you have because obviously you don't want the, the egg mixture to flow over the top. Uh, the other thing is it's really really important whether you make an omelette or a frittata to beat the heck out of your eggs. You can't beat the eggs too much to really get some air inside the mixture. So I have my 10 large eggs in my bowl. I've put some black pepper in the bowl and I've been beating it to put lots of air into the mix. Really important whether you're making a frittata or an omelette to put plenty of air into your mix to make it nice and light and fluffy. So really you want to beat it for about at least four or five minutes when you're doing a frittata to really get some air into the eggs. So I have my 10 inch uh, cast iron pan getting hot. I've got a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil in the pan. I've set the oven for 350 degrees Fahrenheit which is 180 degrees centigrade where I'm going to put the frittata once I've got it started on top of the stove. You need to have all your ingredients close to hand because once the process starts you need to add the things quite quickly and move the eggs around and get the ingredients in. So. The pan is just about hot, you don't want it smoking but you want it just before it gets to the smoking point. Okay, 10 eggs looks like a good measurement. And you're just going to gather that egg into the center to move the egg to help it coalesce, help it start to coagulate. You can see by touching the bottom of the pan how it's doing that. So you don't want it to burn. Okay, now, now it's starting to coalesce. Now we're going to add our ingredients. Okay, so we will first add the cheese, try to distribute the cheese as evenly as you can. So you want to add the, the ingredient you have the most of first, and then you want to add everything else pretty quickly. I'm going to add the sun-dried tomatoes, make sure you get it distributed throughout the frittata. Some basil your 200 grams of panacetta and obviously we need to stir that in a little bit. I want to get them all in first. Our potato and again you want to get that moved in around and at last our courgettes, our 100 grams of sautéed courgettes. So first we want to move that around to get the ingredients through the eggs and now we've got it just about where I want to put it into the oven and it's going to take about 20 minutes in the oven. You 
can just about see it's still coming away from the side, which is good. Right, we're going to put this into our oven now. So I've just taken my frittata out of the oven. It's had 20 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees centigrade. And as you can see, it's springy, but it's not really rubbery. It's nicely, lightly brown around the edges. This is what you're looking for. Absolutely delicious. This will serve at least six adults. And it's a one pan meal because you've got your potatoes in there, you've got your vegetables in there, and you can serve this with a de delicious salad for a, a great meal that's easy to do in the middle of the week. And besides being nutritious, very inexpensive. So I've turned out the frittata onto my cutting board and then allowed it for, to cool for a couple of minutes and sliced it into really nice wedges and put it on my dinner plate and then added some tossed salad. Absolutely delicious and inexpensive. Frittata with salad. You try it at home.